One of the main themes of the civil survey toolset in Brits CAD Pro V25 is ensuring that we've built tools and workflows that work the way that surveyors want to work. Join me, Linda Sharkey, for this 10-minute overview that showcases our new string civil objects, improvements to our transparent commands, and improvements to our labeling of civil objects. Let's get started. One of the most exciting things that we've introduced in B25 are string objects. Now, strings are important because they're the way that we import line work from survey data, as you see here. We imported this data from an enhanced Leica DWG, as we've seen in previous uh, breakout sessions, and we have strings already created, but we can edit them in BritsCAD very easily. Selecting a string and adding a PI will give you this cool, stretchy rubber band thingy, and you can either specify a PI point by clicking, or you can go into the transparent commands, which are now persistent. So head up to point object commands, and we'll choose point object, and select a civil point. Now you can see by these lines that the default elevation for the new PI is zero, which is 404 meters below our civil point. So we could either choose to get elevation from a surface or type it in. Now this part of our survey data isn't on a surface yet, so we'll just type in a value. So 404.06. You'll see now that the new PI has been added to the string and that the transparent command is asking whether we want to add another civil point. We won't, so we're going to hit enter a couple of times to finish the command. And if we go and open up the string editor, we see the new PI. Now, as it says on the tin, the string editor also allows you to edit multiple values from within this panel without actually going and changing things in the canvas. Strings can be created from scratch by selecting a start point and entering values based on either the surface or the elevation or difference or grade, things like that. So for example, here, we're going to choose the ellip in the surface, which is 60, and we'll go on to our next point. We can specify whether we want to create an arc or whether we want to create a line, because one of the great things about strings is that they hold 3D arcs properly. That information is not lost when it comes to either importing into the CAD environment or exporting it uh, to Land XML. That, that 3D art information is kept there. So we can go through and create our, our string. It'll show up on the Civil Explorer. But another thing we can do is also create strings from existing objects. So for example, here we have a polyline representing a road alignment to a site. And by choosing the Create Strings from Object option, it's a simple one-click conversion. Now we have a string, but you can see that within the Civil Explorer, there's no elevation associated with it. We want it to be on the surface. And again, this is where strings are much more useful than 3D polylines. They have far more robust editing tools, supercharged 3D polylines, if you will. Head up to the String Tools and Select Assign Elevations from Surface, select the new string, and choose the surface you want to associate with. If you want to offset from the surface, then you can input that value here. We're going to leave it at zero, and we're going to hit OK. Now, immediately, the string changes elevation. It's shown visually, and it's shown in the Civil Explorer. So we can see the values over here. Within the Civil Explorer, right-click and zoom to the string, then bring up the editor. Now, what we might want to do is create a grading object by going to grading and selecting the string. So let's choose offset and choose the entire length, and then drag the mouse to choose an, an offset. So now that we have a 
rather boring grading, to be honest. But what I think is pretty cool is that if we grab our string and edit it within the string editor, let's change this PI from 59 to 75 for dramatic effect, that grading changes too. So strings can also be exported via Land XML, again, supporting that 3D arc information, which can make prepping data for staking out in the field much quicker and easier. Last year, we introduced transparent commands that enabled surveyors to input industry-specific data into common CAD commands like PLINE. However, with V25, we've added angle and distance and deflection and distance. You may notice that these parcels or lots were drawn using traditional CAD methods and that each edge of the parcel is a single line. Let's use transparent commands to define a closed boundary based on a legal definition. Start the PLINE command and then head up to the transparent commands and choose deflection distance. Select a start point and then an end point and notice how the visual guides show the angles around that point. If you hover in the mouse for a bit, a tooltip comes up with the angle. Now by default, it goes clockwise, but you can select counterclockwise depending on your input data. We'll choose counterclockwise and enter 90. So notice now how we're locked into that 90 degree angle. Then specify a distance of 9.5. Notice now that it's looking for the next uh, set of input. So we can keep going, it's persistent. The next angle is 90 again, distance of 30.087, and then finish off the parcel. When you're done, hit enter to escape the transparent command, and then again to exit the PLINE command. There we have a parcel with a closed boundary. Oops, wait. Uh, let's put it on the proper layer. There you go. Ta-da! New to V25 is the Curve Calculator, which does exactly what it says on the tin. Hit Curve Calculator, and you're able to define a curve based on whatever curve information you have. See here, we've got delta angle, we've got radius, we've got tangent length, we've got chords. We're going to choose the arc definition and change the radius to 6.5. Uh, meters. Now this will change the other parameters, but remember that these can all be overridden if you need to. Click draw curve and select the entity you want to snap it to. The visual guide will show you which side to click on without having to figure out whether you want left or right or anything, because remember, you don't really know what direction this line is going in. So you don't have to figure that out. You can just use the visual guides to click and place your arc. Now, another way to populate the curve calculator is to select an existing curve. When you close the calculator, values return to default, but if you choose select an arc in the drawing, it will automatically give you the values needed to copy that arc. Uh, select the start point and go click. No mess, no fuss. Thank you for spending this time with me for a brief overview of this incredibly powerful functionality in BricsCAD Pro B25. To learn more about what else we've unveiled in B25, join us for these other breakouts. You guys take care now.